Welcome back to Unit 3, where we are discussing uh, the Intermediate Value Theorem. Last time we did the Extreme Value Theorem, now we're introducing the Intermediate. So my learning objective is still the same because we're applying existence theorems. Specifically, we're talking about the IVT, the Intermediate Value Theorem. So we have some assumptions to make as well. We assume that it is continuous. We assume that it is closed. And when we say assume, we say, what are we looking for? That's what I mean by an assumption. But then we can assume that there, are, there must be numbers between f of a and f of b, because if it's continuous, then there must be some number between there, and f of a cannot equal f of b. So what's new? What's different from the IVT to the EVT? And what that is is that we had continuity and closed interval in the EVT, but now for the IVT, you have to make sure that your f of a and your f of b do not equal each other. So you solve for those two y values and make sure they don't equal each other to those two function values. So what could my conclusion be? What do I draw from that? That if f of a or f of x is continuous between f of a and f of b, there must be some y value that is equal to f of c. And so what does that mean? All that means is here I have a continuous graph. It is a closed interval from A to B, so there is some F of A, there is some F of B. They are not equal to each other. That means this must be some random number in between. So let's apply real numbers to that to kind of give you a better feel of what I mean. So if A was equal to 1, and if B was equal to, let's say, I don't know, 4, so then we said f of a was maybe equal to 2.5, and f of b was maybe equal to 14. Then there must be some f of c value that falls between those numbers. So let's say c is 2. Oops, c is 2. So then f of 2 must fall between 2.5 and 14. They're all, that's all they're saying. So with this number, let's pretend f of c was equal to, I don't know, 6. Okay, then yes, it's 6. And how can I see that on my graph? It's physically between them. That's all this, into, that's all this theorem is telling us. So how do I figure that out graphically? Graphically, I plug it in. I ensure that it's continuous, closed. I ensure that f of a and f of b don't equal each other. And how do I do that? I solve those two endpoints, either graphically or analytically. So we ensure they're not equal to each other. Once I do that, I can pick any point in between where f of c must be present. Okay. Analytically, you have to solve those two endpoints numerically. Double check they don't equal each other, and you can create any interval point between on your y. So here I have my first example. Use the IVT to show that this function has a zero on the closed interval. So these are currently our x values, from x to x. That's my from a to b. So what am I going to do? I'm going to test it out. f of 0, that's my f of a, or here's a, here's b, and f of 1. So this becomes 0 cubed plus 2 times 0 minus 1, which is just negative 1. This becomes, um, oh, I'm doing this analytically, and I should be doing it graphically, but that's okay. I'm going to show you both anyway. This becomes 1 cubed plus 2 times 1 minus 1, which is just 1 plus 2 ah, plus 2 minus 1, which is just 2. So my interval, interval for the y, my y interval would be from negative 1 to some value to 2. And what's the y they're asking me to test? It's the 0. So does 0 fall between negative 1 and 2? It sure does. So that would be proving the IVT. Okay, but let's look at that graphically. So I plug it into a graph. Is it continuous? Polynomials are, and I know that this is a polynomial, x cubed. Polynomials are, but I can also see on my graph that at no point would I pick up that pencil as I drew it. So it is continuous. Is it a closed interval? Yes. Am I? But should I identify that closed interval when I graph? Yes, I do. So I went ahead and highlighted it for you so you can see that. Then I identify the, the endpoints. That's f of a. That's f of b. This is, here's my 0, 1. So here's f of uh, 0, and here is f of 1. That's the x value 1 that it's associated with. So now I can see this is equal to 2, and this is equal to negative 1. So I get the same interval point. 
zero does exist between it. And I can see that right here. There is a zero point. When I, when I say that, I mean my y equals zero. Yes, there is a point. So what does that look like if I was writing this for a free response? That's this little sentence statement down here, kind of very similar to what we would see. We'll work on free response, uh, free response correct answers a little bit later in the year, but I just wanted to give you that preview. So let's see. Um, here's that analytical that I accidentally did first. Let's see another one. So we have 1 over x minus 2. Let's plug in that. That becomes f of a is the same as saying f of 5 halves. So I'm going to plug that in. 1 over 5 halves minus 2. Well, that's the same as saying 1 over 5 halves minus 4 halves, which is the same as saying 1 over 1 and a half, which I flip that, and that becomes 2. So my f of a is equal to 2. So then we try f of b, which is f of 7. So that becomes 1 over 7 minus 2, which is simply 1 fifth. So I end up with an f of a, that's 2, and an f of b, that's 1 fifth. And I put those in order. f of b must be less than some f of c must be less than f of a. Well, was it a continuous graph? I would have to either check the parent function. I did not mean to do that. Oh, well, it's gone. I would either have to check the parent function or plug it into a graph. Um, this is a rational and over the interval 5 halves to 7. Um, we do have continuity. And then it is a closed interval because I can see that right here. And we know that f of a and f of b do not equal each other. So we are good to go. So then I have 5 halves. Sorry. Two, what were, what were our numbers? Uh, yeah, two and one fifth. So there we go. And now I test. These are my y values, guys. So I test one fourth. Is one fourth greater than one fifth? It sure is. So the IVT does hold true for this equation. Now, on a multiple choice question, make sure that when they tell you, okay, one fourth lies on that interval, well, which interval would they mention in a multiple choice? They would always mention the x interval, unless they specifically tell you a function value of something less than, then they're talking about your y value. So please make sure you're distinguishing between an x interval and a y value. Here is that graph just to prove it. We have continuity. And I even plugged in, this is the, the, da the dotted line is your one-fourth. So you can see over here, you can see over here that that point does lie between five-halves and between seven. I have another one that I'm hoping you take a moment to accomplish. So this is here for you. The next slide has your answer. All right, here's my next slide. Here's the graph to show you your answers. Why was this not, oops, went too far. Why was this not an allowable question? Well, if, well, you should have checked your assumptions. Is it continuous? Yes. Is it a closed interval? Yes. Do f of a and f of b not equal each other? f of a and f of b did equal each other, so I shouldn't have been allowed to answer this question. Okay, and here's my closure, my assumptions. We know we're looking for continuity. We look for a closed. We know f of a does not equal f of b. If that's the case, then there must be some y value in between that falls between whatever f of a is and whatever f of b is. So here's a little corgi squish just to kind of get you through your day. But I'll see you guys in class, and I'll see you in the next video.